Hi everyone, and thank you for watching this recording. Uh, so if you were at UKV, you kind of saw that we were not able to present, unfortunately. Uh, but as we said, so I'm not doing this recording to give you the opportunity to see the presentation and the uh, data that I wanted to show, uh, to see for you if it's of interest and if you think that uh, Cell Guidance System may have a product for you. I wanted to start my presentation first by uh, presenting myself. So my name is Julia and I am the Field Application Specialist at Cell Guidance Systems. And I'm just going to start by introducing a bit about uh, introducing our company and talking about us. So we are a company uh, that has been established in 2010 and we are based in Cambridge in the UK with offices in the US, in the Missouri state. And we have a lot of products and services for cell culture research in general. But we have a high focus on exosome related products since 2014 when we've actually launched our first exospin column for exosome isolation. So our company statement uh, says that cell guidance systems provide regent and services to enable the control, manipulation and monitoring of the cell, both in vitro and in vivo. So this means that we have a lot of product or services, uh, as I said just before, for cell culture research. So as a, a big summary, um, we have products for plate coating, so we can provide matrix protein, but we also are the European distributor of Matrogen, which is a US-based company that provides polyacrylamine hydrogels. We also provide different cell culture media, so for long-term cells imaging, uh, imaging for proliferation and maintenance of HPLCs. And we also provide custom medium production. So this means that you kind of send us the recipe with the component, component that you need uh, and want, and then we just send the media back to you. We also have two different formats of growth factor. So we have a sustained release growth factor, which is a unique technology that allows a sustained release over time. But we also have the recombinant store that, um, that you know already, the growth factors. And then we also provide cytogenetic services. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of product and services for you. But obviously today I'm not gonna uh, talk more about this, but I'm really gonna focus about our exosome related products. So we have different product and services for exosome research. Uh, I'm gonna talk about today exospin, about exospin, which is a column based uh, method for exosome purification. But we also have nanoparticle tracking analysis services. So this means that you can purify your exosomes in your lab and then you ship it to us on dry ice. And then we will do the characterization for you and send you back um, uh, your report with the raw data uh, within five to ten uh, business days after receiving your samples. We also have an ELISA-like assay in m for exosome detection with uh, CD9, CD63 and CD81 markers. And finally, we also have an exoflow plasmid uh, for exosome tracking in vitro and in vivo. So we have quite a lot as well for your exosome research. So if you have any question, you can go to our website and, um, and um, to learn a bit more, write a bit more, read a bit more. But today I'm really going to focus on our exospin columns. So I'm going to present a paper that has been published on the PLOS One, which compared our exospin columns with two other commercially available kits. Uh, but I'm not going um, to say who it was um, because um, for obvious reasons. But then you can still go to the paper and kind of look which uh, uh, which kits uh, are based on this on this method and has been compared with the exospin. So what they did is like they compare with serum and plasma. Uh, so they bought uh, these two biofluids from a biobank and then they isolated the exosome from both of these samples from a starting volume of 250 microliter. So they isolated using either exospin, as I said, or two other commercially available kits. And then they did a triplicate for each of the protocols. And at the end of all of these three protocols, they had a final elevator of 200 microliter. And so what they did is like they split this volume in two, um, in two different tubes. Uh, the first tube um, uh, was used for TEM, NTA, and stability evaluation analysis. And the second tube was used for protein quantification and immunoblotting. And now I'm just going to take kind of a step back in case you're not familiar with our, our exospin technology and kind of what is a precipitation-based method for exosome isolation. 
So our exospin protocol is in a three-step protocol. Uh, where first we uh, said to do differential centrifugation to kind of clean your sample. So it means to remove cells and cellular debris. And then the second step is to precipitate your sample. So it means that you will uh, mix your sample with a precipitate region and then let it incubate either five minutes if you work on blood or one hour or uh, overnight if you work on other biofluids. So after this step, your exosome will be in a pellet and this is when the two other commercially uh, precipitation based methods stops. So these two kits, at the end of these steps, you will just resuspend this pellet and then do your downstream analysis. However, with the exospin columns, what we did is that we added the extra step, which is um, that you need to resuspend your, your pellet um, in 100 microliter of PBS. And then you add this exosome containing pellet to our exospin column, which are uh, based on size exclusion chromatography method for uh, a second purification. And at the end of this step, you also have a 200 microliter um, of isolated exosomes. So this is the big difference between precipitation-based method and exospin, where with exospin, we added this uh, step um, to say that you have a higher purity. Um, uh, this is why we said so that we have a higher purity by adding this step. And this is what I'm going to uh, show you uh, in this presentation. So from the first data that we've collected, so from NT analysis, they first wanted to see if you have a difference in sizes, depending on this precipitation or our exospin kit. And so from what you see, the gray line is exospin and the two other lines are uh, the two other kits. And you kind of seen that there is not big difference in sizes uh, when using either precipitation or precipitation and size exclusion. But however, when you look at the table below, you kind of see that the concentration is higher uh, with the exospin when compared to the two other kits. So this is quite of interest when you see that there is a higher particle per ml when using uh, size exclusion chromatography than only precipitation-based methods. They also did this TEM analysis where, um, so you see that the size doesn't change much, I just said in the size below in the slide uh, before, sorry. Um, but they also wanted really to see that you actually have exosomes and not protein aggregates, for example. And they could see that for all three methods as well, they actually have exosome-like particles and morphology. So it means that they were able to isolate exosomes from all three methods. However, when they looked at the purity, um, they, um, they analyze the purity by doing a ratio of particle number to protein concentration. And what they saw is that when using exospin, you have a much higher ratio, um, which means that with the exospin, you have a much higher number of particle and low protein concentration than compared with precipitation bed method only. So these are really good data to show that when adding a press after a precipitation step, by in adding the size exclusion chromatography step, it allows to purify your sample from all other particles that co-elute. Um, because if you use the precipitation step only, your, precip your exome will elute, yes, but they will elute with other components that might not need to be there. Um, so this is why by adding this step, you have a much higher uh, sample, a much purer sample uh, by using with the exospin kit. So kind of a, with a quick conclusion, so with NTA and TM analysis, uh, you could see that you do obtain a size distribution within the expected range from, from 30 to 150 nanometer. And this is for all methods and from serum and plasma. Um, but for with the exospin kit, uh, it, it does provide a higher concentration, as I saw before, a higher purity as well, and as well as a recovery rate, which unfortunately I couldn't present today because I didn't have time. But you can see it as well on the paper that they did this analysis. And I've also added this table, which is at the end of the paper, and kind of summarize uh, what they they all the analysis that they did and kind of show that the exospin kit seems to be uh, a better solution for exosome isolation by adding the size exclusion chromatography step to have a highly pure sample preparation at the end of your, of your uh, purification isolation. 
So I just wanted to finish this uh, presentation by talking about our new Exospin Mini HD. So from those who already know our catalog, we had already small columns and big columns for larger volumes, but we kind of didn't have an in-between columns. So this is why we've uh, launched this new product that we're really um, proud of. So this really kind of completes our range of exosome isolation. This column is still based on size exclusion chromatography, but the protocol is based on high resolution fractionation. So for example, the column that I just explained today is based on centrifugation with a final eluate of 200 microliter. But with this, with, with this column, sorry, you have a gravity based uh, purification. So this column doesn't centrifuge, it's only by gravity. And then you collect fractions. So you don't have 200 microliter final eluate, but you have 200 microliter different fractions. And then uh, this column, is, or as all our other uh, columns are robust, simple, and quick. So it's really important for us to, to make it still simple and quick, as we know the time is important for you. And it was also important for us to make it economical uh, when we've launched this new column in the market. So if you want to see the pricing, uh, I invite you to go to the website, because it will depend on which uh, number of columns you'll be interested in. But um, yeah, so we tried to be competitive as well. And so I'm just going to finish my presentation and uh, I swear my last slides uh, by talking about this table. So this table, I'm sure you've saw it in, in your bag when you were at UKV. So it's just to simplify all the kits that we have, because we know that when you're not familiar, it might be a bit confusing. So all you have to do is kind of look which type of biofluid you work on, and then your starting volume. And then you can just see kind of which isolation method you prefer. If you prefer just size exclusion or chromatic precipitation or high fractionation, it will re really depending on what you prefer. And then you will see which exospin kit to consider for your research. So it's a really valuable tool if you kind of are interested and curious to see what, what we can offer for you. So as I said, it was the end of my presentation. So thank you very much uh, for listening uh, all of it. If you have any question, as I said, so you can see there is my email address on the last slide. So you can uh, send me an email straight away and uh, I'm happy to support you. And I hope I will see you um, next year in the new uh, Exosome conference, where I will be this time able to present uh, and take uh, all the questions uh, that you might have live. So thank you very much, and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Bye.